here at the top right where it says advanced Excel notes and practice file, this will definitely work up here at the top right. Um, if you see it, go ahead and click on it. When you put your mouse next to it, um, you'll be able to click on it. And this is the section that we're going to spend some time on. And you'll see some videos here. We're not going to do the videos right now. You can watch them um, during the interim between the two classes. Um, but for now, you don't have to worry about the videos. If you want to, you can watch them later. But this is what we're going to use today, these files down here. OK, those are the files down here. These are links. If I click on one of them, they will open up an Excel file for me. OK, so th that's where we're going to find uh, the hands-on um, activity uh, materials for today. OK, and then down here, I embedded a Word document. So this will let me quickly share information with you. This is what I was trying today. And uh, I'm trying it out today. So I should be able to quickly um, take things in and out of that document for this class. OK, and I think if I refresh this, yeah, OK, it's taking a little while to refresh. Or maybe I have to save. I'm sorry, Professor. Uh-huh. Question? Yes. Um, I cannot open the file. OK. I'll Let's see. It's not clicking. I mean, it's not opening. OK. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back to easyexcel.com. Let, let me minimize that. I mean, I, I have the page, but when I click on the, on the uh, actual page, Easy Excel Learning, mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing coming out. OK. Do you see my little chat tool over here? With, with yes. the link? Yes. OK. OK, it's, it's kind of, OK, if I click on the link in the chat tool, it mm. sh does it bring up this page for you? Yes, it does. OK. And then, yeah, this, this button over here is not working. I'm going to take it out. Go up here where it says Advanced Excel Notes and Practice File. Um, let me, yeah, but... OK, at the top right where it says Advanced Excel. Yeah, hold on one second. Please. Let's try that. And I'm gonna oh, take that. Like I have to, <laughs> I have to open the whole thing in order for me to like see it. Okay. No, 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 no. It's gonna be a little problem. Okay. Like I have, like, I have to minimize the, uh, the windows, and um, yeah, it doesn't just let me see like the whole thing. But okay, now I open it. And and this is the link that we want up here yeah. at the top right: Advanced Excel Notes and Practice File. Yes. Okay. So when you click on that. Mm -hmm. um, it should bring you here. Oh, yes. Going. Yes. Right? yes. And I'm going to also mm -hmm. set up my webcam. So if anybody has questions, you can type into the chat tool or you can wave into the webcam and I'll, I'll um, ask you, you know, what the question is. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Let me set this up as well. Okay, there we are. I see our webcams. Okay, great. So I can see everybody. Okay, so if you need help, just wave into the webcam. If you're not turning on your webcam, then um, use a chat tool. So use either or webcam and or chat and the microphone as well. So you have those three ways to um, interact and ask questions. All right, so let's get back to this page. All right, let's scroll down. And I also want to take a look at the content that um, we're going to cover today. I want to look at that list. I've been using Excel for, mo for over 20 years, so I'm happy to share my experience with Excel. OK, so we're going to cover uh, match and retrieve VLOOKUP functions. OK, so VLOOKUP functions sounds very technical. Uh, it kind of is what it sounds like. It's a vertical lookup, but what's the purpose of it? So when you're using a VLOOKUP, a vertical lookup function, the computer is looking up information based on certain instructions that you give it. And you give it these instructions through the VLOOKUP function in Excel. Okay. 
a vertical lookup is very handy when you need to when you need to access information, connect with another table in an organized way. So it, it is a database function. It's very much like a database function that you would find in Microsoft Access or MySQL or any one of those big um, database applications. But the idea is that you want a particular piece of information based on some search criteria. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's kind of like having an automated way of pulling related information. So for example, uh, when you go shopping either at Target or Amazon and you pick, let's say, um, a nice pair of sneakers or shoes, and when you click on it, the, the computer is probably using a product ID number, right? Because the computer has to organize maybe hundreds of thousands of different kinds of shoes. So, so the computer understands things really well with numbers, like you know, uh, product ID numbers. And when you click on something, it has to retrieve you know, what, what model it is, what brand of shoes it is. Um, it needs to retrieve um, the price, right? Um, so those things are being done through a database. So the VLOOKUP is in there somewhere, there's, or there's a VLOOKUP function occurring in there, or something very similar to VLOOKUP, where you click on something and the computer has to retrieve related information. In this case, the obvious information might be brand and price, okay, among other things. So VLOOKUP is an automated way to retrieve information. It's a vertical lookup. And why does this matter to people? I, I know that companies like, uh, I think at American Express interviews, um, depending on which, uh, what, what kind of job you're looking for, that would sometimes be a question on an interview, depending on the job that you're looking for. They wanna see that you know how to work with data because looking up data is important. Um, getting information is important for business objectives. You might be looking up the name of a client or what else could you be looking up? You could, maybe you're looking up, um, I don't know, uh, if, you're, if you're doing financial modeling or if you're an accountant, maybe you're looking up um, relevant tax brackets or something. And I think they don't want you to do things manually anymore when you're dealing with large sets of data. When you're dealing with huge sets of data, we want to use the computer. We want to leverage what the computer does well. And the computer does um, speed, number crunching pretty well. So the VLOOKUP helps us do things faster, more accurately, and with less human error because it takes it takes the um what do they call that uh careless mistakes out so because you're having the computer execute programming so once you have it set up as a vlookup function things just um work faster and the computer is not going to make a human error if it's going to make an error it might be because of the way the function was set up you might have to update the function from time to time if, if things change, but you're not going to get careless errors when, you, when you're using Microsoft Excel VLOOKUP functions. All right, so let me show you what that looks like. And if you want to do this with me, uh, let's open up this link over here, the one all the way at the bottom that says Intermediate Excel Glen Cove. And then I get this pop-up over here to open or save. I'm going to go with open and VLOOKUP is one of the things that we'll cover. We're also going to cover at a later point macros to automate flows in Microsoft Excel. We're going to look at nested if functions and that will also help you work with data. So I think uh, right, a, a big theme comps? for today is working with data. 
All right, so that, that's going to be our big theme. OK, so when I click on that, this comes up for me. OK, just make sure that this comes up for you guys. OK, anybody need any help getting this file up? OK. OK, so make sure up at the top you click on Enable Editing. So when you click on Enable Editing, that's going to allow you to make changes to this file. That's going to be very important. So you want to make sure you enable the editing. And that, let's go over. It's, there's a bunch of stuff here. There's a bunch of worksheets, right? And let's take a look at this tab over here that says VLOOKUP exact lookup. I'm going to zoom in so it's easy. It's easier to read. OK, so up here, this is my data set. I'm going to highlight it yellow. So this is a very small um, data table, right? It's only two columns, three rows. It's tiny. So it's, this is just to serve as an example of how VLOOKUP works. And then maybe in a few minutes, we'll, we'll look at something that it's a bit more realistic, a bit more challenging. But for now, this is going to be our, our little example. OK, so this is my input down here. This is my input. And then we'll talk about this little data model. And this is my output based on VLOOKUP. This is my output using VLOOKUP. OK. So I don't want to highlight that, though. No highlight. Nope, that's not it. No fill. OK. So I have an input and an output. OK, so when I tell the computer that um, I see green, VLOOKUP is automatically going to tell me that go is the related information. Okay, so if I type in red, automatically it changed the stop. Right? Did that happen for everybody? All right, get your hands on it so you can kind of see what's going on. So if I change it to yellow, VLOOKUP is telling me it to slow down. Right? So very simple example here. Nothing. Um, too crazy, but let's just reflect for a minute and let's let's think. Why why is this helpful? So we kind of said it already, but maybe in your own words, uh, how would you describe um, how this VLOOKUP output, this VLOOKUP process that's going on? We're going to talk about the mechanics of it and how to set it up in a little bit, but first let's kind of let's get a good feeling as as what it might be used for, what its purpose could be. Um, anybody want to take a try at it? What, what's the purpose of VLOOKUP? How is it going to help us? Is this is this useful or um, so? Take a minute to think about um, how you might use VLOOKUP. All right, Sandy, you can turn on your microphone if you want to. Sandy, your microphone is off. Let's see if I can turn the microphone. Off. But but if you, whoa. I guess my kids are back. Um, if no, you... I used it to look up um, information about like, like I use it to figure out their four hundred one k contribution. So I have a spreadsheet with everyone's name and their um, their gross pay, and then it goes and looks up what their contribution is. So I don't have to keep entering it every time. So it's awesome. A... That's a great. And, and what does that save you? Like, like if you didn't have the lookup. What would yeah, happen? We'd have to either like constantly resort. We would have to you know, like look it up. So this way, the information is just on one spreadsheet, and then you can enter them in any order, in any as long as it matches exactly. That's the thing about the key up. thing. Thank you, that. Sandy. So that's a great one. I, I love it because it gives me a picture of an HR file. Right, there's one HR file on one hand. Where's my hand? And then on the other hand. <clears throat> um, you have to look up contributions, right? Because 
you're getting updated information about contributions for, let's say, 200 employees. And to do that manually, uh, that, that could take maybe a couple of hours, right? Mm -hmm. That could take a couple of hours to do it manually, you know, search, um, find, sorting even might make it easier, but it's still going to take a good amount of time and effort and, you know, cognitive, cognitive um, um, load, right? So you, you don't want to, you don't want to put that effort into something that you can have the computer do. All right. So VLOOKUP will do this, you know, after you get good at VLOOKUP, maybe you'll set up the VLOOKUP function in under two minutes, right? And then after you use it for a few months, VLOOKUP, you'll be able to set up under 10 seconds. But, but that's the idea here is we want to use VLOOKUP to help, um, to help us do things quicker, faster, easier, more easily so that we can focus on other things. Maybe, you know, now I don't have to worry. I don't have to spend those two hours looking up contributions from this other file. But now maybe I can focus on looking for better investments for my, um, for my employees or for my company. Maybe, maybe something like that. Maybe I can shop around for better rates because now I saved two hours. You know, now I can do something better to lift up my, my team. So I think that's the idea here is, we want to use technology to make things more efficient so we can spend um, time on things that you feel are better. Okay, so we'll let the computer do the, the stuff that computers do well. You know, let the computer do the boring stuff, right? Nobody wants to do um, search and find anymore, right? You know, maybe 10 years ago that was kind of cool, but now we, we want to let the computer um, do all the stuff that is. Um, by rote, manual, anything that can be automated, I think at this point, especially in a spreadsheet, you want the computer to do. Because you, I think you're going to find yourself to be relieved that, you know, you're not using the computer, you're not using the keyboard and the mouse, you're not clicking for hours, you're not, you know, you know you're, you're better able to use that time and effort into something else, I think. All right. Anybody else see any possible use for VLOOKUP? All right. So I, I, I like that. I like that example that you gave Sandy. Um, so, all right. So again, this is, this is my data set over here. And down here is where the, function is if I double click over here you'll see uh, VLOOKUP is the name of my algorithm okay everybody knows about the equal sign if you don't I can talk a little bit about it everybody knows the purpose of the equal sign okay so who wants to tell me this will reinforce what you know um, what what's the purpose of this equal sign over here this one over here the one that I'm I'm selecting. What does that do? Real quick, somebody turn on their microphone and tell me what that v, that equal sign does. It starts a function. Uh, say that a little bit louder. I miss you. It starts a function. Excellent. It, it'll start either a function or some sort of computation. So yes. So this will this will tell the Excel that this particular cell needs to do some sort of computation either with this function this algorithm or right it, or maybe a plus minus multiply divide maybe something um, arithmetic so that's exactly right so the equal sign is going to tell the cell that there's going to be some sort of computation going on here okay and this particular algorithm is vlookup we were speaking about that uh, that's our vertical lookup. And then notice that when I put my cursor over here in bold, I get a link over here. That'll probably bring me to some, uh, maybe some help resources about VLOOKUP. But it also tells us there's one, two, three, four. There's four um, parameters involved here. 
Okay. So you know what? I'm going to record this also. Let me record this Zoom session in case, um, in case anybody wants to review this information. I'm going to start the recording now. Okay, where is my record button? If you don't want me to record, I can, I can stop it. But um, I'll go ahead and record it. Record on this computer. Okay. So this is my algorithm, VLOOKUP. That is what um, this is called. So, so the, what's an algorithm? Who knows what an algorithm is? Just real quick, who can tell me a couple of things or a couple of words about an algorithm? What's an algorithm? Okay, anybody want to take a, a shot at what an algorithm is? I would say it's a set of instructions. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. It's an algorithm is a set of instructions that the computer follows in our case. And it's step by step. So an algorithm is going to tell the computer what to do. So behind the scenes somewhere, VLOOKUP does something very very specific. And if I click in here, um, if I click over here, let's see what this says. I clicked on that VLOOKUP. So see what I did, guys? If you, this is a nice little resource. So if you, if you see a function that, that you've never um, seen before, I can click on this link, and it looks like I'll get some nice little information here. Oh, look at that. And even links you to a video. Everybody see that? So this is another built-in tool. And obviously, this is very technical. This is good to go through. I'm sure it's good information. And there's even more information down here. So I definitely um, recommend that if you want to go deeper or if you want to see what this tells you about VLOOKUP function, I definitely encourage you to look at that. And look, there's a new X lookup. That one I haven't tried yet, but uh, I might do that later. All right, but let's stick with VLOOKUP here. So uh, this tells you about the algorithm. And I'm going to tell you how I interpret, the, how, how I use VLOOKUP. So there are four parameters here. The first one, when I put my cursor here, it's asking for what? A parameter is an input, right? So when you follow instructions, let's say, let's say you're following instructions on how to make pancakes, right? So you, you need ingredients. And that's what the parameters are. The parameters are your ingredients, right? You need eggs, flour, milk for pancakes, um, if you're making them from scratch. Here, you need, you need, an imp you need a lookup value, OK? So this is telling the algorithm, what is it that I'm looking up? And here, I'm looking up a cell that contains the word yellow or the text yellow, OK? So now the algorithm has something to look up, OK? That's number one. Any questions there with the blue? So the first thing is what to look for. All right. the second. The second parameter is where to look. So this, this part that says table array, if I click on it, let's see what it, let's see what it does. No, it doesn't do anything. Look up value. OK, so that's where it kind of stops. I wonder if I close this, if that will matter. OK, so for some reason, this link is not doing anything on my computer. but, but this is where to look. And if you notice, you see this red over here? See how I'm moving it around? I'm, I need to tell the computer, this algorithm, where to look. So it needs to look over here. It needs to look at my data set. It's a tiny data set here. But that's where it needs to look. That's where I'm restricting the, the, the search area. OK, so again, uh, I, it needs to find yellow. That's the first one. And the second part is, where is it going to look? And it's going to look wherever I tell it to 
um, based on that second parameter. Okay, it's going to look over here. Okay, and the third parameter over here is when it finds yellow, and it, it'll look in the first row. When it finds yellow in the first column, excuse me. When it finds yellow in the first column, it needs to know the column index number to return. So this is very technical. This is probably the most difficult function in Excel. So we're taking care of it right away. This is the most difficult function in Excel and the most difficult algorithm in Excel, in my opinion. So the column index is which column do you need? Which piece of related information do you need? Which component? So for us, we need to know what to do at the traffic light, right? Okay, so just nod with me if, if you're following. If you're not, just raise your hand or wave, okay? Because I'll keep talking and sharing. But if, if you wave or, um, you know, if you get my attention, just let me know if I lost you. So the third parameter, again, is what piece of information do I need back from the red area, this red area up here, right, this red border area? And why is it number two? Somebody answer that so I, I know that um, I, I'm getting across. So why, why did I put number two back? It's who, second, who can put that in English? Second column. Second column. And why is the second column important? Take it one step further. Because so, so why is the second column important here? Because that's the data you want it to return. Exactly. We want to know what action, right? What action to do. So we're kind of doing a little bit of data, data modeling here, right? So what is this the model of? It's a very basic data model. So what's this basic data model of? So everybody knows the Tesla and automatic driving, right? This is not going to run your Tesla, but but this is a small model of a of a traffic light, right? We're putting together information about what to do when we see a particular traffic light. So this is like a tiny, very simple data model where we have inputs and outputs. All right, all right. Any questions there? Third parameter. Okay, and the last parameter, this is a really tricky one. It's either a zero or a one. Zero means exact, exact match. And I think, Sandy, you were, you were saying the, the things have to match exactly, and that's what this zero does. The zero only acknowledges a, a, an exact match between what you're looking for, this blue, and the first column of the red area. So zero means exact. Okay, zero means that the algorithm will only be satisfied with an exact match. Let me let me show you what what that can do. All right. So everybody okay with the four parameters? One is what to look for. Two is where to look. This third parameter is which component of the table do you need, you know? So the second column is, it's the second component that I, that I want, okay? Like if you're doing that um, 401k example, maybe the contribution rate is in the seventh column. So then instead of a two, you put a seven here. Okay, it makes, makes sense. And then the zero means for this particular algorithm, I need an exact match. And then a little bit later, the next example, we'll, we'll look at the other version, which is a range lookup where it's not an exact match. Okay. All right. this, this topic is a little bit dry, not, not too exciting. Unless, unless this is going to save you a ton of time, then it's really exciting, right? 
Um, so, so here we have it. We have an exact match for yellow. But look at this. What if I do a little typo? If I do a little typo like this, what, what happened in terms of that fourth parameter? What's going on here? Couldn't find it. Couldn't find it, right? Couldn't find it because, take it a little bit more. Because it's not an exact match. Exactly. Good. All right. See that? It's not an exact match. So it didn't like it. It, it, it said, no, it, I couldn't find it. it. It's very literal. But now if I put, if I just have one W, it's okay with that. Okay. So everybody good with the exact match? You know, I exaggerated. Now, be careful with this because this happens to me once in a while too. Look at this. You see what I just did? I put a tiny little space here. All right, everybody keep an eye on that space because look, I'm going to press enter. What's going on with the space? So Jeanette, I see you saying something, but if you want to enable your microphone, um, you can take a shot at it. It created an invisible character, so it's no longer an exact match. Exactly. That that extra space is saying it's not an exact match. It's, it's saying no exact match. So that's what's going on here. But look at the interesting thing here. If I put a space over here, okay, look what happened down there. All right. So just well, that's one of the little quirky things about VLOOKUP. That, that's the quirkiest thing about VLOOKUP. Um, that it doesn't deal with spaces very well. Okay. So now I have a space in both places and it says, okay, that's an exact match. It makes it difficult because we can't see if there's a space or not. So just be careful with that. And that, that happens to me, I don't know, once every other month. I was like, what's going on here? They look exact and it's usually a, like a space. There's a mismatch of a space. All right. All right. All right. All right, so now I want you I want you to do this, guys. I want you to throw in some colors down here. And I really want you to kind of see what VLOOKUP does and how it can save us time. And I'm just gonna share a little bit more about this before we move on to the next example. So I'll throw in purple. I'll throw in green. Uh, what are the colors? Let me throw in blue. Okay, throw in any colors that you like here. And here, I'm going to copy and paste, or I can use the autofill. Watch this, guys. All right, I'm using my autofill, or I can copy and paste. Whoops. Let me undo that. And you see what happened there? I autofill. I autofilled, and in a split second, right? It was less than a second, like a fraction of a second. What did the computer do? It copied the formula. Yep, yep. It calculated that algorithm. It went through that algorithm so fast. There's no way I could do it that fast, you know, right? I wouldn't be able to do it that fast manually. Even with a tiny set of data like this, I could not do it anywhere as quickly as the algorithm does it. Now think of now that HR file, you know, the employee um, 401k file, and then another table with contribution rates. You right? You'd be there a long, long time. You know, maybe a few hours, or maybe most of the day. If you were to do it manually, right? That's what they had to do, I don't know, 20 years ago? No, no, 30, maybe 40 years ago. Um, so, so it'll do it really fast, okay? So that's, that's the one thing I really want you to walk away with when you see VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP has the possibility of doing things fairly quickly, okay? All right, so that's the information I'd like you to absorb. 
and it's going to be tough to to connect it to what you do. But if you want to talk about it, you know, maybe I can kind of point you in a, in a direction of how to connect the V lookup with something that you do. All right. So any any questions or thoughts about vertical lookup? This I have is a the question. exact match. So in, in a little bit, we're going to do the, the, the range lookup in a little bit. But any, any questions question. about the exact match we look up? Michael, what were you saying? I have a question. So yeah, I walk it. into an office. I have a, I walk into an office and uh, they say, okay, I want you to do a V lookup for uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. What should my focus be mentally? Is it the four parameters, the four, um, the four parameters and my fo my focus is on the four parameters. Am I correct? That's exactly right. And then you also want to ask them, they're going to ask you to do a VLOOKUP. And you, you're going to want to identify what information is of importance. So do they want the price? Do they want the quantity to see maybe, maybe, you're, um, maybe they're looking at inventory. So maybe quantity is important. Or, or maybe you're doing a transaction and maybe the, 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 the grand total is important, okay? Or maybe you're looking at um, changes, um, uh, changes in prices. So maybe you want to change in price. And let's see, if you're an accountant, maybe you're looking up the tax bracket, right? So, so it's very important to identify what information is important. Okay, so you may have to ask them if, if you're talking about an interview. Um, okay, so so let me let me help you. Let me let me share something with you, Michael. Um, what is it? Yeah, yeah. There's this there's a process. There's analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. So th those are good keywords, Michael. Um, analyze, design develop, implement, and evaluate. So, so those are five parts. I'm glad you asked that question because now I can share some, some of the experience that I have. So when you analyze something, you want to you wanna know, you know, what are the questions? Okay, so, so you want to gather the questions, you know, kind of like a needs analysis, right? So analyze. And you can use this with teaching. You can use this at an interview. You know, is it just a quick little way? Um, and you can use this with programming. So you want to analyze, you know, what's going on? What are the questions? And then once you know what the questions are, you can start looking at the design part. So in the, in the design part, that's where you clarify your objectives. Okay. So your objective might be um, we need the the price of all these items. Okay. So now, now you're going to define an objective, come up with a VLOOKUP that will obtain all the prices. Okay. And then in the, in the, after you design your objectives, your development process is where you spell out how you're going to carry out your objectives. Okay. So for us, we're going to spell it out by, um, by picking out the four parameters, okay? So analyze, design, develop, and implement is when you, now you get on your keyboard and you, and you type away, okay? This could all be done in a few minutes or it could, it could be done over, over weeks if it's a huge project, right? For us, this, this, would, this would be done over maybe five or 10 minutes for a VLOOKUP example. All right, so we were on the um, development is going to spell out how you're going to execute your objectives. Implementation is the heavy lifting. Now you're out there, you know, getting your hands on and doing the stuff. Okay. And I think this was the technique that was used to train the army during World War II. There had to be a quick way to train, you know, hundreds of thousands of soldiers. And, and this is one of the methods that was used. 
um, implement. And we're now, once you implement, now you're going to put it out there, you know, put it out there, see if it works and you're going to evaluate. So the last part is evaluate. And that's where you're going to compare um, your objectives that you designed with the results that you obtained. And at that point, it becomes a recursive process, Michael, where you kind of have to troubleshoot and, and see if you achieve what you needed to achieve. Okay, so that was analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. So, the, so if, if there's ever a question that kind of like, okay, I don't know what's going on, you can break it up into those steps. And that's one of the problem solving uh, techniques that I like to use. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, yes, yeah, so to answer your question, when, you, when they ask you, you gotta, you gotta be clear and, and it, it could be okay if you don't know, you just confirm with them, okay, I'm gonna have a VLOOKUP that pulls up the price. And then, and then once you do that, it's gonna be clear as to what you're looking for, where to look for it. The third thing is which component is important, right? So maybe price is the 10th the, the component out here. All right, for us, it's two because we have a tiny data set. And then zero would be um, an exact match, maybe based on product ID. And then the match here, the way VLOOKUP is set up, it's going to be what you're looking for, the blue. And it's going to try to match up with the first component of the table, the first column. It only is limited to looking up and down the first column of your table. Okay, so that's one of the limitations of VLOOKUP. Okay, so that's, that's how that works. All right, so uh, great question, Michael. Thanks for asking that. I, I love those questions because it lets me add more to this class. Okay, um, all right, any other questions, guys? VLOOKUP before we move on to the second VLOOKUP example? Sandy, was that a hand? No? Okay. No. All right. All right. So let's go to range lookup. So that's the next worksheet uh, up here. Uh, so that's the next one. All right. Okay. This one, the formula is not there. Okay. The formula, the VLOOKUP function is not there. Okay. So let me ask you a question. If I, if I'm, if my input if my input, it's funny. If my input is 90, what's my output going to be? A. Yeah, I heard an A. Good. Thank you. I think that might have been Jeanette, Janet or Stephanie. I saw something um, on my periphery. But yes, that's correct. Um, it'll be an A. I just typed it in my hand, myself. Right? I did it manually kind of like um, not I didn't use a VLOOKUP function but let's let's practice now okay all right so now let's I mean you can practice or I'd like a volunteer or we can do it as a group how would you do it how would you put in a VLOOKUP here all right practice see this this is where you definitely want to practice don't be afraid of making mistakes that you know no one's going to um, it's not going to be you know it's Making mistakes actually is a good thing because when you make a mistake, you're more likely to remember um, the mistake you made and how to correct it. But um, that's why participation is important in these workshops. So who wants to give it a shot? Equals what? Okay, who, somebody said something. Equals V lookup. Good, V lookup. All right, open parentheses. C5. C5, uh, be careful, it, it's going to be the variable. So, so it's going to be C8 is what to look for, okay? Because if we say C5, we're doing the work for it, okay? So we don't want to do the work for the algorithm. We, we want to point it to what to look for, okay? So it'll be C8. All right. 
All right, keep going or keep going, Michael. So what's the next part? So the next, the second parameter is where to look. Where to look. Um, oh, I'm sorry. C, uh, C2 to C5? C2 no. to C5, D5. Yes, C2 to D5. Now, one thing over here is this is a floating reference. So I need to lock it down. Who remembers how to lock down this reference? With a dollar sign. Exactly. Anybody remember the shortcut for dollar signs? So There's a nice little shortcut. All right, let me tell you. F as in Frank 4. It's, it's on the top of your keyboard. So if you look at your keyboard, F4 is up here. It's one of these. Yeah, let me turn my light on. So F4 is, is this button up here, F4 up here, the, kind of like the first top column, function four. Well, actually, let me try it because sometimes, oh yeah, it's function four. So when you throw, when you press function four, you should see the dollar signs come up. Or you can do them one by one, but function four is pretty, pretty quick. You know, it just throws the four dollar signs down for you. Okay. All right. Everybody, everybody on the same page with us? All right. Comma. What's the third parameter? Column index. So what component, what related column is important to us? What, what related column do we need here in this little example? Two. Good. Two. That's going to give us that letter grade, right? Yeah. Good. Comma. And then you think we're going to put in a zero for an exact match or a one for a what they call a uh, range match? A one. Good. That's right. I mean, that we didn't talk about yet, but that's the right answer. So one is going to give us an A. And actually, a zero also works here in this particular case. Why does a zero also work? So a zero or a one will work in this case. So why does a zero work? Because it's exact match too. Yep, a 90 and a 90 an exact match. But now, I mean, let me, let me put it back to a zero so you can see the, 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 the effect here. Let's say I put in a 94. All right, there's the problem right there, right? My problem is I have an exact match component. It really needs to be a, instead of a zero, it needs to be a one, right? And a one, they call it a true or approximate match. You can, you can also use, um, you can also use true. True and one are the same thing. So if you like true, true is equal to one, false is equal to zero. So you can use true or one. So look, now it's more robust. Now it understands a 92 is an A, right? It understands that an 84 is a B. Okay. All right, so we kind of spoke about when we need an exact match, right? When you're looking up employee numbers, it's got to match exactly, right? You don't want to give the wrong contribution rate to another employee, right? That has to be exact. Now, this one, if you're a teacher and you're grading essays or, you know, if you're, if you're grading um, some work, these would be, these would be range lookups, meaning anything above a 60 but below a 70 comes out to a d anything between 70 and 80 is a c anything between 80 and 90 is a b anything above a 90 is an a okay so this would be a better lookup that's set up for those different ranges 
So we're, we're looking at a range of numbers or yeah, an interval, an interval of numbers. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. All right, so if I put in, let's say 75, it works, right? All right, now let's do our thing again. Let's just throw in any numbers that you like. Um, I put it in and why it didn't work. So I'm just going to throw in a bunch of numbers there. Let the computer figure it out, right? We don't need to, once we set up the process and the, the algorithm, then the computer can do it really fast. There we go. Right? A comma. And here as well, let's say this exam was really tough and maybe anybody that got above an 84 gets an A. See what happened? Let me, let me go back. So let's say there's a little curve. Maybe I had to throw out some questions or we didn't cover something so everybody gets some points. So if I, if I bring the A down to an 84, two of them updated automatically here. Here, let me... Let me um, watch what happens here. So it was a 90, but those greens now, if I, if I change the requirement for an A to an 84, those two green ones updated automatically. So, so that's a nice other thing about a VLOOKUP. It's not a static connection. It's, it's dynamic, right? I can, I can change things as I need to, I can change this to a 50, 60, 70, 80. That didn't change much, but you can kind of see. Yeah, it's, all right, so it's not changing much, but it is dynamic. Let me see, I may change this back to a, a 95. There we go. Make this 85. And you can see the dynamic nature of it now. Okay. Um, quick question. Yes, Brian. How would you uh, reverse the uh, input output, like type in C, generate, uh, whatever the number grade is? Oh, good question. So you want to go the other direction? You get a letter grade and then and then get the number? Yeah. Okay. So that would be then. Okay. So let's, we can do that. That's actually a great example. Let's, let, let's do that. Um, we're going to do that as an example now because we have the, the information in front of us and we can do it based on what we talked about so far. Okay, so um, we're going to answer that question now. All right, so now you want your input. Let's, let's do another, let me do it on the side here. My input, just for clarity, is going to be some letters. I'm going to say A. I'm going to jump around a little bit. C, D, and I'll go back to A and B. And we want our output to be the letter, right? I'm sorry. We want the output to be the numerical value. All right. right. Is that correct, Brian? Right. All right. So let's do this. This, is, this will be a great activity for us. Okay, let me know when everybody's ready. Just give me a thumbs up on the webcam if you're ready to go. All right. Okay. And the letters don't matter, so you don't have to have these same letters. Just, you know, come up with a bunch of letters that you like, um, A through D. And you can throw in, like, um, a, a different letter also. All right, so a couple of things have to happen here. First, we need to tell it where to look. So it's going to look up and down this column over here. Right, Brian? Right. Okay, now the other thing that I need is I need the component to be after that column. So let me call this numerical value, okay? So you can do a couple of things here. I can just copy 
and paste here, or I could I could do a reference. I can do a reference this way if one changes, like if I change this to a 90 at one point and back to an 80, I can just have that reference be dynamic. Okay, so that's one thing I would do. So let me let me get rid of all the color and and just highlight the parts that I want to focus on. So this is what this is what we're focusing on. Okay, so I added this. I added this column over here because my VLOOKUP needs to know what component it needs. And this has to be the first column, so that's why I had to add a column to it. It needs um, so, a second column. So everything, all inputs always have to be to the right, I mean to the left of the um, value that you're measuring it against? Like it always has to be in, in, in where to look, correct. So in, in, the, in the second component where it says where to look for, it only is, VLOOKUP is set up only to look at the first column to find a match, and then it can only return values to the right of it. So what you're saying is correct. Okay. But this over here, yeah, I don't want to get too complicated, but this input can be anywhere. I can put this input over here. I can put it down here. So, but but to, just to keep it simple for now, we'll just stick with talking about the where to look part. Okay, everybody okay now? We're, we're, we're here? Okay. So now let's throw in our VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP. Okay, so Brian, what's my input here for what, what does it need to match up? G8. Perfect. That's what um, to look for. Uh, highlight D2 to E6. Excellent. So there's my what to look for in blue, where to look for in red. And then this is a floating reference. How do we, how do we lock it down? F four. F four on the keyboard, and that's that's the first column of your keyboard up here. F four. First, first row of your keyboard. F four. Okay. Okay, and that's where to look. Comma, what component of that table do you need? First, second, which component? Two. Two, good. That's the numerical value, comma. Now, would this be um, an exact match or a range lookup? Um, I guess exact. But yeah, I agree with you, exact, because we want exactly an A. So it'll be a zero. OK, zero means exact. And then. I'm going to autofill this down. And notice that it'll tell you what numerical value corresponds to the letter grade. So an A is being evaluated as a 90, a C as a 75. But maybe, maybe you want an A to be evaluated as a 95. So maybe you can do plus 5 here. Let me let me do a plus five for all of those. So maybe this is a little bit better, Michael, based on what, what you're trying to model or what you're trying to do. Okay, so while you guys absorb that information, I am going to get my attendance sheet and maybe spend the next five minutes if you want to stretch out. Uh, we've been at it for an hour and 15 minutes, roughly. Uh, let me just set my timer for five minutes. Why don't we do a five-minute stretch out? This way, you guys can stretch out a little bit, you know, you know, if you need to get some water or something. Let's just take a five-minute break. And then 
Maybe uh, you can come back can with more questions. Can I see that function again? Yes. Let me go over here. And there's the function. Just make, and then you have the color coding there. You have the color coding hit there to help you line things up because my G8 might be maybe your F7. You know, we, we, our alignment by, might be a little bit off, but just go with the color coding to help you line things up on your worksheet. All right, so let me get the mm -hmm. roster and all right, let's do a five minute break, okay? All right, so I'm, I'm setting my timer to five minutes and then that'll give you an opportunity to stretch out and then we'll resume.
Okay, so I'm back. I have the attendance sheet. Uh, let me just check, make sure everybody's here. Okay. Okay, so Renee Dillon, I see. Sandra Gibson, I remember. I changed, yeah, we, I don't see you on my screen anymore. Hey, there you are, Sandy. Okay, Lawrence Michael is here. Stephanie Len. Yep. Uh, there you are. Um, Brian Mullen. Uh, Mary I Alice Tyler. Yep, I see you. And let's see, Jeanette or Janet Woodyear. I see you. Okay, Rosita. I don't see you on my list, Rosita. I'm here. Uh, you're not you're not on my roster, Rosita. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I think I think I might have you on a separate email. Let oh. me see. For some reason, um, you came in maybe as a separate email. Now I'm remembering. Uh, let me look you up. It's probably from Maureen that sent it to me. Yes. Yep. 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 There it is. I got Good. you. <laughs> and oh boy. come on. So many screens. Okay. How do I do this? I go to the snipping tool and I get a new and I can just paste that to the rust that I have. Check mark here. There's so much technology, it's crazy. All right, uh, let me make sure I got everybody. Rosita, Jeanette, Maroof, I remember. Yep, we got, we took care of you this morning. Uh, let me add you to the roster as well. Okay, I need to go back to this other button. New. Okay. All right, let me save that. Okay, and put a check mark there. All right, let's see who else here. Mary, Renee, Stephanie, Jeanette, Brian, Michael. Yep, everybody's all counted for. Perfect. And now I can lock the room. <laughs> They're very strict with them. Um, who can come in and out. So I'll, I am comfortable with locking this meeting. Now, if you, for some reason, no, I'm not going to lock because you might lose your connection and then you'll be locked out. Um, I'll enable the waiting room. That's what I'll do. Okay. Okay. Um, Good question. Yes, Good question. question, Professor. With yeah. the limitations of VLOOKUP, is there ever, is there ever an instance where the, the values you're looking for are, are formatted in the document and you have to reformat it? Oh, so VLOOKUP in terms, interprets things, I believe, in the ASCII method. That's, um, what does ASCII stand for? Uh, certain number of characters, like, like um, so VLOOKUP will disregard formatting. Okay, now sometimes, I, I think I remember one time where that was a problem, kind of like the spaces were a problem. So if it doesn't understand the formatting, it gets confused and gives you an error message. So whenever you do a VLOOKUP, try to do plain text. And let me show you, Michael, what I mean. Like, I, I've had a problem with formatting maybe once in five years, um, but, but this is what I'm talking about. So, I mean, this is all plain text, but if I do a copy, right-click copy, 
and then if I do an alt control alt control V so control alt V I copied what was above now I can do paste special values okay so when I do that that strips out all the formatting nicely in Excel so I don't know if that's kind of helps a little bit so if you're worried about formatting V lookup usually handles most formatting well by just disregarding whether it's a different font size different font style V lookup doesn't really look at that um, but if you think the formatting is going to be a problem then I would copy like if this was all crazy formatting you know if this was like like the formatting shouldn't really matter um, it's not going to throw off anything right if I do this and then and then let's say let's say I do it here yeah the formatting if I change this and I make it like a funny format uh, let me do something that looks really different maybe this one this one this one no Broadway let's go Broadway so if I change this to a 90 it still works so the formatting usually doesn't matter but once in a while, once in a while there'll be like this really crazy formatting and it does funny things and in those cases I would do something like this I would do copy and then in a new area on your keyboard control alt v will let you just paste the values without the formatting so when I select values it just gives me some clean text. Okay, but usually that, that, you know, I think I had that bug happen and this helped once in, you know, in five years. But you know, everybody's, you know, works with different kinds of data, different formatting, so it, it's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I use this technique that I'm showing you to strip out formatting. So sometimes the formatting is a little too um, distracting so then I do control alt V and then I just do plain values so it just makes sometimes it just makes it easier to read because it's cleaner without the formatting okay I, I've got a question absolutely yes uh, uh, Janet where you were mentioning values uh, mm -hmm. or formatting uh, mm -hmm. everything that all, all the data that's in there is under general uh, sometimes because I'm getting information from different places, some may be entered as like an amount, and some may be entered as dollar or money or mm -hmm. general. With the V lookup, disregard that as well. Yes, yes, it, because the the formatting usually, from what I remember in my experience, the formatting is mostly for um people like users to understand it better but behind the scenes vlookup is only going to refer to the values and the text okay yeah so if you have short date versus long date if you mix it up um, vlookup is not going to matter too much watch what i do here like you know this is going to look funny but if i do long date here right it's gonna give me a crazy number but notice notice um how am I going to explain this? All right, so if I change this to a 95, you can see the VLOOKUP down here is still working, even though I have you know this formatting that does not make sense. So the point of this is that the formatting doesn't make sense to us, but the computer doesn't really care. It's just going to look at the underlying number. The underlying number is, is 100 right now. Okay, so, so yeah. So I'm, I mean, let me know if that kind of helped a little bit. The formatting is mostly for users. VLOOKUP is kind of disregarding whatever format you have here. So if I format this as time, um, it's still going to work because, let's see, I'll format this as time as well. It's going to, but you wouldn't do this really, but I'm just kind of exaggerating so that you can kind of see that. The formatting doesn't really work. If I put a 90, 90 here, you know, the VLOOKUP down here is still working fine. It's just my formatting that's the problem for us, not for the computer. 
So I can just change this back to general. And now, you know, it's easier for us. But the computer had no problem with it either way. Uh, yes, Sandy? Um, is there a way to lock the formatting? Like I, 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 I sometimes I have like a time and then if I type in something else, it automatically changes the format. But I want it to force me to enter a time. Huh. Let's go real quick under options. Maybe there's some defaults that you can assign. Um, I'm just going to spend one minute on this because yeah. formatting, uh, let's see. Um, general. Um, I thought maybe there would be something under formatting. Let's see. Data? No. Yeah, I don't see anywhere, and I never came across where you can assign default formats. Hmm. So tell me the problem again that you're trying to resolve, Sandy. Before I want it to be a time format, you know, like I want it. I want to have to enter a time, but if I just put in one zero zero, it just changes it to general. And it's like I want it to know I'm looking to enter a time. All right. So give me an example of which time. Let's say you're entering what time you want to enter now. Let's see what happens. Let's say one a.m. One what was one, that? One a.m. One one a.m. Yeah, yeah, one a.m. Okay, so that's what it thinks I want. So is that where you kind of give me another time? Maybe that wasn't a, give me a different. Well, well, it's it's doing a general, but like I want it to know that I'm. I, I need I need the cell to stay like a twenty four hour format. But I uh, notice if I just type in something different, then it just changes the format and the formula works because the formula is looking for a time. So I mean? so tell me what you give me a couple more examples. Let's type in something okay. and see where it's a problem. 10 a.m. and I want to subtract one from the other. That's really what I'm trying to do. <laughs> 10 a.m., right? I'm trying to figure out the time difference. So it would be, you know, whatever, E16 minus E15, mm -hmm. right? Now, if I go, if you go in and just type something different, you know what I mean? It's not a time. It just doesn't look for a time. It just, you know, quirks the formula. So this result of 9 a.m., uh, yeah. what you were looking for a, a different result? What, what was the result were you looking for? No, that is the, well, no, I'm actually looking for just nine, but. Nine. Nine hours. Right. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to give it to you there. What's point three seven five? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so time, that's going to be a little funny here. Um, I wonder what I can suggest here. You're looking for nine hours. Yeah. So, so, okay. So I think, okay. So let me, I mean, I have the formula, but the problem is when I type in like E15, if I type something that's not a number format, it just, you know, time format, it just, it doesn't have a problem with it. I, is there a way to there's no way to force Excel to say, no, this has to be a format formatted as a time. There's no way to like, I know you could do that in a database. I, I just don't know if you could do it in Excel. So if, if you want the results to be nine hours, let me see if I can do that. And maybe that'll help. That'll be the difference. And then the difference here will be in hours. Now Excel, I believe works in days. So one represents a day. So that fraction that we saw, we'd have to multiply by 24. Nope, not 24. Let me see. I know times are tricky here. I have the formula. I have a working formula. I just, uh, when I go to put in data, like if I, like I said, if I don't put it in exactly the right time format, it takes the data, but then it doesn't recognize it's the time anymore. There you go. Is that a right click solution? Uh, format cells time. No, uh, yeah, you could. 
I, I just want it to know that it has to stay in that format. Like if you go in and type like something else, like it's not, it's going to just take the data and quirk your formula out. So I don't know if there's a way to kind of tell Excel, like this has to be a time format. This cell has to be in time format. Well, the, the way you could, it's like besides, two, besides you know, doing like a direct format, like how, like, I don't want, I, I want, well, I have it set already as a time format, but like, if you go in and just type something else, it decides to change your, your format. You know, if you type in something else, type in like ABC, it'll go back to like general, you okay, know, so, so in, in the data, not in the formula. All right. All right. So let's start over again. Let's, let's start. All right. all right. One more, one more try. Cause I'm not clear. All right. So let's start down here. All right. So tell me what my, what am I doing here? Okay. Well, go back up. It's fine. Just type over 1 a.m. Because type these these formats, once it sets it, it, it it's going to default to whatever for, format it was last. Not in the formula, in the data. Just right. let, me, let me do 1 a.m. Because we, we definitely want to do a fresh cell. Because those are already been um, altered. All right. So I'm going to do... All right. So what do you want me to do here? No, I just want, if you enter something other than 1 a.m., just enter like one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Oh, how did, what the hell is that? It's going to stick to it. <laughs> one, two, three. Um, this is a time format. Yeah, so, so there's something else going on here. So, for example, 10 a.m., if I type in um, a thousand or a huge number, it's going to give me... Oh, that was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Let's, let's just do a thousand or five hundred. That's yeah, still giving me. It's still saying days. What's going on here? If you look up here, the the date is changing, but it's still midnight. Or yeah, I guess that would be midnight. So yeah, this is a formatting question. Um, let me know if you have a problem. Like like do the problem on your computer. And then when you know what you want, I can help you with that, okay? Yeah, and the problem is my comp I'm not on the same computer. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, that's formatting thing. I just, I, I yeah. have a custom format for the time, but I notice if I type in something different, it, it's just changing my formatting. It's just saying, oh, this is general now. Like if I, you know, so. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, if you show me how, what's going on there, maybe I can help you there. I just. You know, I, I need to see the the specific issue. I, I can't seem to reproduce the issue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So let's see. We were talking about VLOOKUP, and the last thing was formatting. Um, all right. So any questions on VLOOKUP, anybody? All right. Let's see if we can do some more exciting VLOOKUP. Let's see if that, if uh, VLOOKUP can be exciting. All right, let's go to, all right, so I'm gonna minimize, well, let me see. I'm gonna move this out of the way. The way I moved it out of the way, guys, was I clicked up here in the title bar, right? This was our VLOOKUP. Up here, I just clicked and dragged. So this is a Windows feature. If I take like a, like a non-busy space of the title up here, where the title bar is, I can click and drag it out of the way. And I see behind my page, I have my um, browser. So down here, I see files. OK, so tell me which data type or data set seems more interesting to you. The First one is about assessing your taxes. So if you live in Nassau County, you can uh, you can grieve your taxes on an annual basis. This is the easiest thing you can do. Uh, I think I think the I think I once like 15 years ago, I filled out something in the mail, and they charged me like 50% of the savings. So it, they saved me $600, and they charged me. $300 for the service. But that's what this is about. It's about finding um, comparable houses to lower your own tax, your assessment level. 
So it's super easy, but that's what that data set is about. It's about houses and then looking at houses to make a case that your taxes are too high because it's much higher than you know the particular ones that you pick out. So that's the first data set. And it's about houses in, um, in Nassau County, a, a small sample. The second example is about restaurants. So if you own a little restaurant and you have some sort of payment system, this is data. It's going to show you who the waiter was, what table number the transaction took place in, maybe what they ordered. So that, that has like a restaurant business theme. Then this is, I kind of like this one. This is the one I've been working with uh, this past couple of weeks. Excel has this cool feature. I think it's really cool. You can pull in, in information about stocks. So if you like stocks, this is a nice little simple Excel example. And okay, those are the three, I, those are the three themes that I kind of like. And then the, I think in one of these is like a barbecue uh, shopping list, but those are the four. So, uh, what do you guys think? Which which theme seems more interesting to you? Let's do a little vote. Uh, raise your hand if you want to look at some housing data. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that seems very popular. Um, the people that don't have their webcams on, maybe type into your chat. If you just type in house, house or housing data into the chat tool, this way I can take your vote into account. Uh, let me see. Let me go to chat. Okay, housing. Okay, Brian, I got your. Okay, so housing so far seems to be in a huge lead. What about restaurant? Restaurant data. Okay, one, two. And you can vote twice. It's all right. One, two. Okay, two. And stocks. Stocks. Raise your hand for stocks. One. I see one on the webcam, one on the chat. So I think the housing data, you know, we can start with that and, you know, we'll move on to different data if it's, if it's not that interesting. All right, so go back to my website. And I think it was a clear majority there. So go to um, the first ARC comps. I think that's a assessment review commission comps. I think that's what I named it at. So if you click on this, you'll get the same prompt that we saw earlier. And I'll go to open with Excel. And I'll see if we can apply VLOOKUP here somewhere. OK, so then this comes up. I'll maximize it. And this is the small data set, very tiny data set sample. And then I'll click enable editing okay so take a minute if you want me to repeat that i will if you are good just give me the thumbs up you know or give me a wave all right so let me give you a good all right rosita you're good and then while you're waiting you can you can make the columns a little bit wider okay i'm gonna make my screen a little bit zoom in a little bit you can always double click also and double click each one. Another thing that I like is in the home tab, there's something here with formatting here, format auto fit column width. This is another nice thing. I like Rosita uh, auto fit column width. Eh, that's all right. I thought it was going to be more impressive, but it just auto fits each column. So if you need help, I will uh, gladly repeat the steps. How did you do the auto fit? The auto fit, I, I, I have to select a few things. You can select as much or as little as you want. And whatever you select under home, the home tab, under where is formatting here, where is it? Here, under cells format, there is auto fit column width, that one over here.
And there's one thing I, I wanted to try. I wanted to experiment with. If you guys have questions, has anybody here tried Clubhouse? Ever heard of the club, uh, the app called Clubhouse? Well, it's a social media app. And the reason I got into it, it must have been like two months ago. Elon Musk was going to, he did talk on Clubhouse. And the idea was that you can go into this app that's called Clubhouse and you can, you know, join his room, his live room. And, you know, it, at, potentially ask him questions if you raise your hand. You know, it's an interesting idea. And now on Clubhouse, I was thinking about doing maybe just random Q&A on Excel. So if anybody's interested, uh, you know, I would probably pick certain days and times that work for me. I'm not sure which times yet, but I was thinking about doing that. Maybe do like 30 minute little, little Q&A on Excel on Clubhouse. And it would be live over this audio tool. But I probably would put a link to a Zoom session because to talk about it really doesn't help. You'd have to, uh, I guess Clubhouse would be a way to get to a Zoom session like this. And it'll be something really brief. Um, but I, I was thinking about doing that. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, um, you know, if you want to test it out with me, that we could probably try that. Probably do small, like 15 or 30 minute sessions. And then it'll be done through Clubhouse where anybody can join, anybody on Clubhouse. So if you're interested in that, just send me an email and um, see if we can set some some uh, clubhouse, you know, social media meetings. And, and they talk about everything, you know, from stocks to electric cars. Uh, I think Mark Zuckerberg was on once, and I, you know, so it's it's a really interesting app. Okay. Um, all right. All right. So everybody have this file open. Okay. All right. So we have some information here, uh, some ID number, the town, the sale price, uh, the sale date, right? If the sale date, I got probably format. Let me highlight those. And let me go to general, let me go to short date. Okay, so I formatted sale date. Everybody see what I did there? I just formatted that. And can you please have, do one more time. One. Yes. So so if you have the file open, yes. I I go down to the center of one of the cells. I get this like big plus sign, right? This plus sign huge plus sign and then i can click and drag that to select a bunch of cells or you can do this you can click on the d yes. and that'll select the entire column right either one i could do that or that and then under the home tab you go down here and you go to short date Okay, so let's see, what are we gonna do here? I gotta figure out some VLOOKUP to do. I mean, I could VLOOKUP based on, all right, so we have zip code, but it already tells us the town. Year built, okay, let's, let's work with year built. Um, all right, so we're gonna group this. Okay, so everybody with me? Let's go to column J, and then I'm gonna just say age of house. Okay, I want I want to be able to categorize these as newer or older homes, and they're all kind of like 
built a long time ago, right? 50s, 60s. Well, 60s, I guess, is kind of new compared to the other ones. All right, everybody have this in column J, age of house. And then on the side over here, I'm going to put in year and then age of house. Okay. And one thing I have to emphasize here, if I'm doing a, a, a categorizing by year, I have to go in ascending order, meaning the numbers have to get bigger as I go down. You kind of saw that with the A, B, C, D. It was, it was like 60, 70, 80, 90. The, the numbers were increasing as you went down the column. So here, I'm going to start with 1930. Then I'll go to 1940. I'm increasing. I'll do 19. Uh, I'll just jump to 1960. No. Yeah, I'm just, I'll just do that for now. And then here, 1930 to 40, I'll, I'll put in oldest. Oldest homes. And then down here would be the newest homes, right? Newest homes. And then um, what would be in between? Bring your masks. Uh, what do you guys think? We'll be a good label here. <laughs> oldest, newest, we'll be in between, guys. Jonathan, my hair looks good. You have a mask? Current. One more time, I couldn't hear you. Current. 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 Yeah. Okay, the 40s. But the 40s wouldn't be too current, so, so give me another word. It would be it would be categorizing the four the houses from the forties roughly. Mid age. Okay, we can do mid age. Mid age homes, or what else would be another word? Average age homes. If it's in the middle, average, or median, right? Let's get let's get statistical. Median age homes. Uh, so yeah. All right, we got the idea. Average. Median, let's go with average. Because I guess it's relative, right? All right, so this will be our where to look, right? And in column, in cell J2, that's where I'm going to put in my V. Can somebody mute? Can somebody mute? Oh, that's probably me. That's probably my kids in the background. I'm sorry. Hold on, let me... I think they're going out to a birthday party. Let me, um, let, let me just, let me go and say this for a minute. I'll be right back. Oh, I guess it was him. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I'm back. They were just getting their stuff together to go to a birthday party. But now it should be quiet unless my dogs start to bark. Um, all right. All right, so all right, we were in cell J2. Okay, I'm going to put in the equal sign. And Michael, what would be the function there? You want to help us out again? Um, v lookup. Perfect. Parentheses. Mm -hmm. uh, H2. H2 sounds good. Perfect. That's two. awesome. The H, H22. Okay. Comma. I would say less than 1930. I don't know. So, uh, so the, the, the first parameter is perfect. What to look for? H2. The second parameter is mm -hmm. where to look. So we're going to look in this yellow area. So we're going to select this data set over here. Can you guys see my screen? So notice, for me, it came out N2 to O4. That corresponds to this area. But your, your letters might be a little bit different, depending on you know, where you put it on your sheet. But just make sure. It's looking at this little table here. Yeah, there, there's my dog back there. I have two dogs, so hopefully they don't start barking. I'll give them a treat or something. This way they, they don't create too much background noise. Okay, and then what do I have to do here at this point, guys? Who wants to help out as well? F4. Mm -hmm. A four, very nice. That's going to keep it locked. That's that's what the dollar signs do. They keep that yellow area locked. Because later, when I copy down this larger data set, I need the yellow to be locked. So that's why I need those dollar signs. It's an absolute reference. Good. All right. Comma, what else is next, guys? What component do I need? What related information do I want? You want column two. Beautiful. Very nice. Two. That's going to give me that comment, the age of house, house age. Comma, and then will this be an exact match or an approximate range match? Which one of the twos? Approximate range. OK, excellent. And that, we can either put a true or which number? One. one. Good. You can write in true or one. Close your parentheses. And then there's the first result. And then I'm going to double click or copy down. So most of them are average. Huh. So let me change this from 1940. Let's change this to 1950 in the yellow. Okay, there we go. 1950 gives me a nicer breakup. So let's go down. So it'll be 30 to 50, and then 50 to 60. Okay, all right. So the idea here was, and you can change this however you want. You know, you can, you can do 1925, 1950, you know, you, you can you can change this around. So maybe if you want it, I mean, see, let's see see what it does to your to your um, your homes, right? Because the smallest one is nineteen forty. So I want to want to stay at nineteen forty, and maybe I'll do nineteen. You, know, you can definitely change this around. Okay, so this one kind of looks okay. 1940, 1945, 1950. But you can see we're not doing this manually now, right? The VLOOKUP has the algorithm to group things for me. So the grouping is now uh, partly automatic. I just tell it how to group and it'll group it 
automatically for me. It's, it's a dynamic grouping now. Okay. And now I can sort on this. I can do data. I can, I can do a sort on column J. And I get a few average homes here. A lot of and newer homes, I guess it's anything in the 50 that's saying it's newer homes. Okay, and then there's one that was rated as an older home, 1942. I think that might be, you know, that's not my home, but my, my home was for 1942, but that's not mine. Okay, all right, so you see how VLOOKUP is working? It's connecting two data sets. This is the sample of homes. That's one data set. And then this other data set is what is being used to categorize the homes in terms of... Can you go back? I'm sorry. Can you go back yeah. to the sorting? Yes. So to sort, I'd like to do a right click. This is another way to do it. Right click. And then where is my sort? These little... No, that's font size. Where is my sort? Here we go. Sort. So it's a long list of things, but under sort, you can you can do um, the first two, A to Z or Z to A. So right click is usually. So if you highlight J, if I'm just highlighting J and I do sort, be careful there. It it it, right. it, it, it may discombobulate your your data. It right, might, that's it, what that's my question is. Yeah. Uh, that's why I asked you to go back because if I just highlight J yeah. and do and do an A to J, it's just going to do J. So what did you do to to um? So what what did? So I recommend I what well, I'll show you what I did. Let me go back a couple. So let's let's both go back a little bit. All right. So this looks like what it was before I made any sort. So. You could, if your active cell is in here, just you know, just select only one cell. Don't don't even select two, because that may discombobulate stuff. But just have your active cell on one cell. And then what I did was, I went to the data tab, and then under sort and filter, I used these A to Z, Z to A. Okay, and if I press A to Z, wherever my active cell is, that's where it'll sort. Okay, right. thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Good questions. All right, so we use VLOOKUP for that. So now, newest home, the newest home group is huge. So I, I may want to lower, I may want to lower the, the cutoff for newest homes. So what should I lower it down to? Instead of 1950, um, oh, I, I need to get more more under newest home. So I'm bringing it down to what, 1947? Because it's huge. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I have to, I have to raise it. 1955? 1955, yeah. Let's try that. That's much better. Look at that. That's a great one. So now I'll do a, a right click over here. Sort A to Z. Okay, so I get newest homes. And now my oldest homes is too small, so I may want to increase 1940 a little bit. So what do you think? What do you think? So what should I increase 1940 to? And we could try it a few times, so just pick a bigger number. It's not over 
I may have to make this a little bit bigger too. I may, I may have to move 1945 up. So let's move it to, let's see what happens when I do 1947. Nothing happens. How about 1949? Okay, 1949 did a little bit. So, so now I'll right click over here, sort A to Z. And I get three. Let me know if my dogs are annoying. I can, I can give them a treat, quiet them down for the next hour. Yeah, I, bet, I better. Let me, uh, let me leave you with this for a minute. Change these years a little bit so you so that roughly a third of them are average homes, a third of them are newest homes, and a third of them are oldest homes. It, this might be as good as it can get, but try to even it out so that they're in groups of of three. So three three evenly sized groups. So right now I have three that are under oldest. So maybe we just need maybe two more added to the oldest category, and then that would come off of the average homes. So see how you can change these numbers. And I think you may have to lower 1949 a little bit, but, but this might be as good as it gets. So, so just try that. And if my dogs bark again, I'll go downstairs and um, maybe I'll, I can't put them outside because then my neighbors will will complain. So I'll have to give him a treat or something. Okay, and I thought of another V lookup that that might be interesting. Oh, we can do a V lookup on living area. Living area sounds good. And then we can do another one on lot area. Okay, so I think I think age of house is okay for now. I think that kind of helps. All right, so if anybody wants to volunteer, any changes to this, we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll move on to the next VLOOKUP. And again, VLOOKUP is the trickiest function in Excel. I don't think there are, I think it's the most complicated one. Okay, any questions? Um, Brian, I can't see your webcam, so if you guys without a webcam, anybody without a cat webcam has a question, um, feel free to use your microphone or type into the chat. I'm checking the chat every so often. Um, if you're on the webcam, it's easy for me to see if you're if you have a question. No, no questions here. Okay, good to hear. I have a quick question. Um, will H lookup do the same as V lookup? H lookup is very similar it's just the orientation instead of looking up and right. down a column mm -hmm. each lookup is a horizontal lookup mm -hmm. across the row okay very similar um each lookup i think i've used once in a while but most well, i shouldn't say most but in my experience v lookup comes up more often more often okay yeah because lists are more naturally up and down and you're looking up and down lists okay yeah, but there could be situations where H lookup can be used. Absolutely. 
And I wonder if I have a video on my, on my, I don't know if I have a video for VLOOKUP. And nested if, well, I can post this video, the one that we did. Here's HLOOKUP. There's an HLOOKUP video I did a while ago. And, and then there's nested if, you can watch that over the, over the, interim period, if you like. It's not required, but that might help. Whoa, my stuff disappeared. I don't know why that happened. Okay, let me go back. Okay, there it is. Okay, questions, anybody? All right, let's do another VLOOKUP then. Did you, anybody want to change the years or you're okay with the years like this? Okay, we're okay. All right, let's do a VLOOKUP on another column. You pick, you pick the column and you tell me the VLOOKUP because I want you to kind of get a better sense of how to, how to use VLOOKUP. I, I have a couple of, of ideas, but I think I want to hear from you to tell me which, price. yeah, yeah. Give me some of your ideas. Sale price. Sale price. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. So we're going to do a VLOOKUP on sale price. And then what will be the output? What will be, so you, it's going to be based on sale price. So to give an example, let's say it starts at low as, you're not going to find anything under 300,000, but we'll start there. And then let's just do 400,000. Hopefully I have the right zeros. I can, I can change the formatting there. 500,000. Right, let's, let's split it up into those three. Now let me show you a trick also. This trick is handy. Um, I can select numbers. I can do control shift one. Let's try that again, control shift one. And I don't like the extra um, two places after the decimal, but it, it's all right. I like that control shift one just puts in the commas in real quickly. And then I have to take out the, the decimals though. I usually don't show decimals most of the time. Oh, wrong button. Or you can just, yeah, yeah. Control shift one gives me the comma separators. All right, so you're going to look up based on price and what kind of outputs are you thinking about? Uh, my roof, I think it was my roof, right? That, what kind of output do you want? Tile. Say that one more time. Um, maybe town or city. Town or city, interesting. So, so, so that output, let's see. Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. Huh. All right. So you might be thinking about a pivot table. I, I think I, I think I think I have a sense of what you want, but I think you may be thinking of a pivot table. You want to see something really cool, guys? Let me just just to break it up a little bit. All right. Just just sit back and relax for a minute, and then and then if you like it, you know I'll I'll go into it. But I think I think you're looking for a report um, grouped by price and then the towns under it. So let me just kind of walk through it sort of fast, just in case um, you like it or not. So if I go to insert pivot tables, that I believe is my favorite favorite feature in Excel, the pivot table, and we can talk a little bit about it. Um, it's it's an intermediate concept. I think you guys covered pivot table in the intermediate, I think. Um, but this is my favorite thing, pivot tables. So I'm going to, a pivot table, what it does is it converts a raw data set. So right now I'm considering this my raw data set, what you see in front of you. 
and it's raw because it's just data. Here it is. It's, it's unprocessed for the most part. Yes, it's been structured and clean and looks nice and neat, but, but essentially it's raw data because I'm going to process it into something else soon. So that's why I'm calling it my raw data. So I'm kicking off a pivot table and I click OK. And then now, um, Maruf, I'm going to drag in sale price to rows. Okay. So look at look at this. I have I have all the prices listed here. So this is now we're we're processing the raw data into our report. Let me make it bigger. And and then I'm gonna go take care of my dogs. But I want to show you this and so you can think about this. And this is a little bit advanced, but I can show you how to do it. Right click group and I'm gonna start at zero. And it, this is defaulted to grouping by 100,000. Let's do this. Let's start it at, um, all right, let's do, let's start it at, let's start at 400. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, so I have groups here. So, I, and I'll talk about it in a little bit. And now you mentioned you want to see the towns or cities. So now I'm going to grab the towns or cities. I'm going to put it under the sale price. And I, I don't know if this is what you wanted, but this pivot tables lets you create reports very quickly. Yep. And let's see what else I can do here. Um, and that's not going to help too much. Okay, count of years, no good. Sale date, I get sale date out. Um, all right, so let's do it like this. If I switch this town or city above sale price, okay, so this is telling me in, in Balmore, I want some more information though. I wanna know, I need to know, let me just put this over here, just so I can get some numbers. In Belmore, there were four houses in the 400,000 area, 400,000 mm -hmm. um, range. And then in Merrick, there weren't any in the 400,000 range. There was four in the half a million range, right? And then yes. there was one Luxina. In North Belmore, uh, it looks like it picked up two. There was one in the 400,000 and one in the 600,000. But clearly based on this data, it looks like you're gonna find more homes that are above 500,000 in Merrick based on the sample. Um, so this is, this is really cool because Pivot Tables is an amazing tool to analyze data by taking raw data and creating these reports in a matter of seconds. This is actually, in my opinion, easier than VLOOKUPs. And that's why this is probably my favorite feature in Excel. But um, I just wanted to show you that because I thought maybe you were, wanted a report like that when you said yes, sale I, price. Yes, that's what I was looking for, yes. Exactly. And this is like the coolest tool ever because you can easily mix and match. Um, let's see, what else can you do here? Um, Let's see, you can do, if I, if I wanna, okay, if I wanna, if I don't wanna look at towns right now, maybe I wanna look at uh, living area. So if I bring down living area, so I guess that's the inside square footage, it looks like. So, you know, you have it broken down by price ranges. So for the more expensive homes, um, you get this one that has 1,700 square feet, but this one looks like a good deal, 800 square feet in the mid-range. And this looks like a great deal, and we'd have to take a closer look at it, but you're getting 1,700, almost 1,800 square feet in the 400,000 range. So this is a really cool way to go through data as well. And um, if you double-click on that number, it uh -huh. takes you, if you double-click, and that number under the count of style, it takes you directly to that particular 
particular. Yes. Thing. Yep. That's exactly right, Jeanette. So let me do what you're mentioning, what you're saying. If I double click, I believe on either one of these, um, I'll click on double click on this one. And then there it is. It'll in a new sheet, it'll show you what that record was about. And that's this home over here. So this was a fairly recent date, right? It's about um, eight months ago. And you can tell, and it was under our average age home, which is good. That average age home is better than an older home in most cases, but obviously you need an inspector to, to look at, you know, termite damage or whatever is there. Um, but this is a good start. And, and yeah, yeah, so you, you have, different ways of analyzing information. And yeah, pivot tables are fantastic. And then if you guys want to talk a little bit more about pivot tables, we could definitely do that. I always enjoy talking about pivot tables. It's exciting because you can take huge data and then quickly, very quickly, try to see patterns or items of interest, you know, in, in in a in an easier um, format as a report that's much easier to read than the raw data like like well that, that's the raw data yeah that's the raw data uh, but or this raw data okay all right so um, but back to VLOOKUPs and then we can always talk about pivot tables in a little bit. But I do want to focus on VLOOKUPs um, before we jump to pivot tables. All right, so for sale price, we were saying this would, we can say, um, what, how do you want to, this will be, what are you, expensive group? Or how, how do you want to say it in a roof? You want to call it the expensive roof or high, high price, higher priced? Higher priced. And then this is mid priced. Sounds good. And then we can call this um, value price, right? A good starter home, probably. Exactly. And then we can call this um, uh, price range. And then, yes. Yeah, so this is this is what I use to grieve the taxes. And if I put it in Excel, sort it, I can quickly pick out, you know, this is how I use it. And I figure we could also use it for VLOOKUP examples. So, so yeah, so right away I can see I'm going to use probably these three houses as a basis to getting my taxes reduced. And it's super easy. You go on to the NASA County website, you create an account, you put in your information, it'll give you a sample feed like this. And then all you have to do is identify the homes that will help you help your case to reduce your, your assessment level. Very easy. And, and I think I had paid $300 for it. Like, I don't know, it was like 12 years ago when I didn't know how to do it. Then I did it one time. I was like, wow, I did this in like under 30 minutes. And then and the last time I did it, um, a couple of weeks ago, I did it under 10 minutes. So it's the easiest thing you can do. If you, yeah. Um, all right. So, all right. So there, this is our other table that we will use. Okay. And then here I'm going to just title it price range. And then I'll do equals V lookup, right? And then what's the first parameter, guys? B2. OK, so it's going to be C2. C2 is what it's looking up. Oh. That's the what part. Comma, where is it going to look up that price? So what do you guys think? Where is it going to look up that sale price? 
bell price and the price range. And and good and what? Eight. Yep. This and for me it looks like it's N nine, but for you it might be a little bit you know off depending on the cell. But just make sure you reference this little table over here, the one that we just put together as a group. Okay, and I don't want it to be a floating reference like it is up here. So how do I lock it? F four. F four. Perfect. F four. Comma. Um, all our data sets were kind of small. So what part of the, what component of that table do I want? Which which component? It? Two. Two. Yep. The second component. Perfect. And then. Comma, will this be an exact match B lookup or a range lookup? Range. Okay. You, range. You guys finish this up. I'm going to just do something about my dogs. I'll be right back in a minute. I know it's distracting in the background. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, so where did we leave off? We left off with, all right, is it an exact match or a range match? Range. Range. Range, excellent. And then would that be a zero or a one? One. Perfect. And I'll press enter. Whoa, I get an A, but let's see what happens if I autofill. Okay. So it kind of looks good, right? Except for that zero, that zero, and we'll talk about that error. But did you guys get maybe how many? Six mid price. And if I highlight these, there's nothing on the 300. Oh, okay. So this is what we'll do. All right. So let me show you how to read this, and that'll explain this error message. So I have to get. I have to get the sale price oh, in the picture. Okay, so the algorithm is going to do, um, it's gonna look one row at a time. So let me highlight this row. So just looking at K2, let me make that yellow, I'll take the yellow off of this, so it's not distracting. Okay, so when it's looking at a sale price of zero, the algorithm is going down this list. It's, it's literally going to go down this where to look area. Okay, so it's really important that these numbers be in ascending order. That's super important when you're doing a range lookup. They must be in ascending order. If the order is not, if the order is all mixed up, the 
the range lookup is not going to work. It's going to give you inconsistent results. It's just no good. So it, it must be in ascending order for the range lookup. That's super important. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So this is the way it works. Let, let's pick another number. Let's let's start with let's start with this number. Four hundred seventy-five thousand. So the algorithm is going to say, okay, is four seventy-five bigger than three hundred k? And the answer is yes. Okay. So it's going to say, okay, it's it's going it's doing its thing. It's going to go to the next line now. Same number, 475. Is 475 bigger than 400? And the answer there is yes again, right? So it's bigger. So it's going to continue to go until it fails. So now it's over here. Is 475 bigger than 500,000? There it's failing. So the answer is no. And the way the algorithm works is if it fails, then it's going to, it's going to resort to where it was last. It's going to um, go back to the last time it was true. So the last time it was true, the last time it worked was over here. So that's why 475 gives you mid priced. Okay. So that's how the, that's the way you can think of the algorithm behind the scenes for a range lookup. Now, now let's address this zero. The zero so using the same methodology for the algorithm, is zero bigger than 300? No, right? So it failed. Okay, so it, it didn't work right off the, right, right out of the gates, didn't work. So it failed. So it's going to resort to the last time it was true, which was never. So that's why we're getting an error message. Okay. So to fix this, I'm going to throw in a zero here. Okay, very unrealistic. But now, as soon as I threw in a zero, and maybe to make it a little bit more realistic, I'll just put 100,000, which you're not going to find anyway. So 100,000, not going to find that in real life, not in Long Island at least. Um, for 100,000, then let's see, zero still not working. So I do have to go down to zero for that, for that one. That's a weird one. I don't know why the sale price was, maybe, maybe it was transferred to a relative. I don't know. I don't know why that sale price is zero, but here, but as soon as I make the zero, then anything between zero and 400 will be categorized as value price. So maybe that, that helps a little bit, but ask me a question if, if that wasn't clear. So before it was 300,000, which, which made sense as we were doing it, but then we encountered this error message and it had to do with the algorithm. The algorithm is going to look at the zero and it's going to compare it to the 300,000 and, and it's not bigger than 300,000. So it's going to fail. And that's why I'm getting an NA. So to fix this, I kind of have to just make this zero. And then kind of that'll fix that part. Question. Yes. When did you when did you change the um, the order of the sale prices? I didn't I don't remember us doing that because your sale prices are going increasing from zero all the way up to six thirty five. I don't remember when we did that. Damn it. Yeah, I can I can change that. I. That's a good question. When did I do that? I don't remember, but but if you want me to let me put this in because the, the because the reference I get a I got a hashtag ref immediately because my first number is six thirty five and we're going three four five. Okay. Value price. So okay, so Michael, you... just make sure mm -hmm. that this little table over here, the yellow. That right. must be an ascending order. It must go from, you know, a lower number. In this case, I have it at zero to 400 to 500. So just confirm that first. I have 300, 400, and 500,000. Okay. And that's going to give you one error over here for the zero. Are you getting other errors besides the zero? I got hashtag reference. 
exclamation point. And I would only assume that because my first number is 635,000 in uh, column C. Okay, so um, do you want to share your so, screen and we can look at it? I, I mean, I can so, probably. So you, you, you changed the sale price. Um, yours is, is uh, going from zero up to 635 minus. Let's get this back. What did you do? When did you do it? Okay, let, let me reverse my order because if I have 635 on the top, um, that shouldn't change my results. Let um, me go from right. large to small. So now I have 635 on the top. And let me highlight this, Michael. Let me highlight this to make sure you have. Um, why don't we enter the formula again together? All right. So I'm going to I'm going to delete. OK. All right. I delete fixed those. It. I think and I fixed it. Hold on. You fixed let it? me okay. just check. OK. Let me check something. Hold on. And okay, meantime. now I got the NA. I got the NA. So I fixed that portion. Now, what did you say? What happens when we get the NA? Okay, so the Just, NA should only be for the zero. Right. And, and to fix that, I changed what I had over here. This was 300,000 before. Okay. And that's what gave me the NA. So and you changed it to zero. I changed it to zero because of the funny zero sale price. I don't know why the sample data had that, but. Wait, now I'm going to hashtag ref again. Again, hold on, let me see something. Formula. Yeah, I'm going to hashtag ref. This is hard. Read me, read me your formula where it says that. So double click in there and just read it to me. We look up parentheses C2, dollar sign N, dollar sign nine, Two dollar sign n dollar sign eleven comma two comma one close parenthesis. Okay, so go back to that 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 absolute reference. Read me that reference again, and then just make sure that the red is is looking at the right thing on your screen. That red reference. Okay, dollar sign n. Mm-hmm. Dollar sign nine. Okay. Two dollar sign n. Dollar sign eleven. Okay, that's it. So, so the n dollar sign eleven should be should be dollar sign o dollar sign eleven. So, in other words, it, it sounds like. Where you're looking is only looking at what column. Oh, you, you got to go out to the O. The yeah, you got to go okay. out to the O, and that'll oh, be your okay. second column. Oh, oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. Oh, yeah. okay. And then after you make that change, make sure you update all the other VLOOKUP functions. All right. So make sure you copy and paste over the other old ones. Okay. Okay. Jeanette, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm having a technical difficulty. A call came in and I lost the video. How do I get the zoom back to a full image? Right now you're in thumbnail and I can't see anything. Okay, let me ask you one thing, Janet. Um, you're on two devices, right? Yes. So the device that you're not on, there should be an option to disable the audio on one device. So that, that'll reduce the feedback. So um, yeah, so maybe... the. Yeah, I think you have to disable the audio, but it's fine if, you know, we only have 20 minutes left, but don't worry about it. Um, but for next time, I can show you how to disable, or, or the next time you sign in, I'll talk to you about disabling the audio so you don't get the feedback. But uh, which video do you want back? The webcam video or my screen share? You want to be able to see share? your screen. Okay, so for that, go down to Zoom. You should see like the Zoom logo. It's blue with a camera logo. Oh, got it. And then when you click on that, that should bring up my screen. Let me make okay. sure. I, I got it. You got it? Okay. All right, good. All Thank right. You. All right. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. All right. 
All right, so we're good with that. Let's see if any other VLOOKUP questions um, come up. Um, we can do a VLOOKUP on living area, lot area. Okay, let's do... Um, all right, let's do one more. Let's do one on style. And then we'll say... Uh, We'll say, let's see, um, desired. Okay. So, all right. So let's just type in colonial. And then do you want to put a yes or a no for colonial? Is that your desired style? Just give me a yes or no. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. We'll say yes. Let's go down the list. Split. Split. And then it has to be exact. Split level. What about, is that a yes or no? No. Okay, we'll say no. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter. We'll just say that's our preference. All right, so ranch. Okay, uh, desired, yes or no? Yes. No. All right, I got a split. <laughs> Give me a tiebreaker. All right, who's going to be the, the tiebreaker? I'm going okay with Michael. <laughs> All right, so what was it? What do we decide, yes or no? Yes. I heard yes, okay. And let's, let's see, Cape. No. No, right, yes. Yeah, I, my first home was a Cape. It's a great first home, you know. I think you're going to get your best bargain on a Cape, but then um, you can run out of bedrooms very quickly if your family grows. Um, all right, what other, did we cover all the styles here? Old style. Old style. Thank you. I'm not familiar with old style, so I, I don't. I don't. Not familiar with that term. So, what do you guys say? Yes or no to that? No. Say no. Okay. All right. So the column L. That's where I am right now. And then and I'm just gonna take. I'm gonna label it preferred style. And then underneath it will be a yes or a no. All right. All right, this will be a good one because this will give us practice with the other type of VLOOKUP. All right, so equals VLOOKUP. And notice that as I type it, if you look at my screen, if it comes up in blue like you see on the screen right now, I can press the tab key on my keyboard and it'll fill it in with the open parentheses. That's just a nice little uh, time saver, a little shortcut. So again, what I did was I put equals V and then V gives you like a lot of options, but once you type in VL, it narrows it down to one Excel function. And then I can press the tab key and it'll fill it in for me. That's a little shortcut. All right, what is our lookup? What are we looking for here in the raw data? So which cell are e. we looking for? E2. E2, excellent. E2 sounds great. Comma, and then where am I looking? Uh, and my screen will be end. Mm-hmm, end. And, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. You N got it. 12, I think. Well, my screen will be N12. Perfect. All right. And just make sure everybody look at your screen and make sure you pick this as your red area, the where to look for. So from colonial all the way down to the no. Okay. So make sure you do that. And we're not going to have it floating like this. We have to lock it down with which shortcut? F4. F4. Very nice. Comma. And then... Uh, Rosita, what's the third parameter? What component do we want? Um, and mine will be 017. Oh, two? Two, right. It's the second column of the table. So two is perfect. Comma, now is this going to be a range lookup or an exact lookup? Ah. A range? Be careful. Exact. It's going to be exact. Now, why exact. is it going to be exact? Because Cape and Colonial are too close together. Mm -hmm. Because the text has to be the exact text match, right? 
So cape has to be exactly cape. Ranch has to be an exact match for ranch. So this will be a zero for an exact match. Because there's no ranges here. There, there's no numerical range. Usually ranges, usually it's with numbers. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Some some numbers can be exact. Like a, a product ID number could be an exact VLOOKUP. But this one is going to be an exact VLOOKUP because the text has to match exactly. Colonial has to match with colonial, cape with cape, you know, et cetera. All right, let's press enter. Let's autofill. And then we can see it looks to be down the middle, right? It looks almost 50-50. Half of them are yeses and half of them seem to be noes. All right, so, and let's say you ask um, other people and let's say they are more particular. Maybe they say, um, yeah, colonial is supposed to be really nice. Uh, but let's just say ranch, they say no for, for some reason. And you can see, when I change that to no, the VLOOKUP automatically updated, right? And you can see more no's. But let me go back and I'll say, you know, ranch is a yes. And then again, automatic, dynamically connected, right? So in other words, it connected my raw data set that we've been working with. It connected it to this little set, right? So VLOOKUP lets enables a connection between two sets of data and it's dynamic. So these are my preferences right now, but maybe my preferences will change in two months. I don't know. And then you just make the changes. VLOOKUP will update everything. I've got a question. Jeanette, what was the question? Is there a way? I can show you how to disconnect one of the okay. audios. If you if you click on the little carrot next to your microphone, on the microphone that you're not using, you'll go. There'll, there'll be an option to leave computer audio. So just leave computer audio on the machine that you're not using. But. But you can you can leave it alone. That's fine. Also, I, mean, I, can, I can I can understand you. That's fine. We'll take care of it another time. Is there any shortcut to autofill all the way down without actually having to drag? Yes. Let me show you how I do it. Great question. Um, all right. Let me let's just say these are empty, right? So once you enter your VLOOKUP at the top, I press enter, and then what I do. Is a, uh, there's a two ways to do it. This is my preferred way. I make this the active cell. I look for the bottom right. The bottom right is the, the autofill handle. If I double click here, it'll automatically go down the entire list for me. So it's a double click again, it's a double click right over here. Okay. All right. Okay, so any other questions? Okay. Um, all right, so let's see what we have left. We have about 12 minutes left, right? And let's see. All right, so for next time we have to cover, let me get my, let me get my, okay, let's see. All right, so kind of we're, we're kind of good with VLOOKUP functions. I can kind of cross this out. Do I have cross out? Yeah, we're kind of okay with match and retrieve VLOOKUP. You know, we we spent that's the toughest thing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about name ranges. Macros are pretty neat. Let me show you some macros now to kind of get you thinking for next week. And then nested if functions, um, we'll talk about that next week, but. Let me see if I can get you some interesting things about macros. Let me let me see. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go to, let me find some macros. All right, so macros enables you to automate repetitive things inside of Excel. And let me come up with some macros demos. I have a few that are among my favorites. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Okay, here's a macro. And this might be a little bit more complicated, but this is just to give you an idea. Okay, so so when we were face-to-face, -face, this is an older file, um, I was teaching, my, I was teaching um, the math portion of the SAT review. And we, we met once a week and we did group work. So each group would work on, let's say, 10 math questions over, let's say, 30 minutes. And then they had to be, they had to be set up in these groups. And we usually had groups of three or four, like you see here. So a macro can let me create these groups automatically at the touch of a button. So if you look at this, if I, if I click on create groups, I can quickly create groups like in under a second, right? Each time I click on that button, I can create new groups. And this was important to me because creating groups it does take effort and time during the class. You have to create the groups each time. You have to show the groups, you know, communicate it to the class so they can assemble in these different parts of the room in their groups. So, so it was important for me to automate this because if I needed to create two different groups over the course of, I think we met for two hours, <coughs> um, I, it was important for me to do this quickly. I, I didn't want to spend, you know, 10, 20 minutes, you know, writing this down. And it, it's, it's, it's a very repetitive thing. So I was able to create this process in Excel where if I take down the attendance, let me show you where I take down the attendance. So this is, this is the roster, okay? So the roster is there. And then what I was able to do is, based on that roster that doesn't change for the whole, um, what was it, like uh, 10 sessions. So it was about two months. For the two and a half months that we met, that roster doesn't change. So I can just click on this button and it'll create these groups for me, right? I see Matthew, Renata, group one. If I click it again, let's see, Renata now is where? Renata now is in group three. And I think Matthew, there's two Matthews, Matthew R, Matthew M. They are in groups three and five. So this, this helped me a lot. And then if someone was absent, let's say, um, let's just say John was absent. I can cut and then move him down here to the absent group. And now I have a little attendance here. So this macro really, really helped with the with the um, mechanical part of the of the course. So now all I have to do is it's now nice and simple. I can we can take care of business in the classroom just by clicking this button and we're off to a good start. You know, I don't have to put the time and the energy into this stuff that can be automated. I can just push the button, get the kids in the groups, and then talk about and troubleshoot the math questions. And this was really helpful. It just saved so much effort. It's really interesting because once you have this automation, 
part set up, it the class just feels so much better. It's just like one less, I don't know, one less thing to have to worry about. So you can focus on the more interesting things. Um, and that's, I have two I, questions. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Where did the buttons come from? Yep. So the buttons, uh, Michael, if I go over here under, where is it? Developer. Uh, I have under, de I ha I'll show you when, how to enable developer. That's one of the things we'll do. Um, it's very easy. It's under file. And I, and I think it might be in one of the videos on my page that we've been using today. But if I go to developer um, under insert, you have a little toolbox. And this first button here, I believe, is it. If I click over here, I can now introduce a new button. And let's see, I can, I can link it to two macros that are already here. Uh, I'm going to just be redundant, and I'm going to link it back to create groups. And then here, I give it a name, uh, create groups. OK, and then once I click off of it, this should be a working button now. So if I click on it, all it's doing is triggering that macro. You see that? So I, I have a redundancy now. I have two buttons. I don't need two buttons, but it was just to show you where the button came from. It was from developer okay. and then this insert little toolbox area. All right. OK. Um, also, another question. Mm -hmm. um, is that would that be the same process as to create a drop down menu within a cell? Ooh, drop down menus. I've used that before. The the way I show drop down menus is through data validation. It's been a while. I, I, that one doesn't come up too often, so it kind of dropped off my my list. But when I and I can show you under data validation. Um, I think it's this part. And then you can tell it what the drop down will be based on. So yes, that that will help you create drop downs. Yeah, there's a few steps in there which I don't recall off the top of my head, but there it'll let you type it in directly or you can use a reference and the reference will be your drop down. So you can refer let's say to five cells and those five cells will appear in your drop down. So that that's pretty neat for data entry. Excuse me, Juan. Yes. Uh, if I don't see, I probably have a older version of Excel and I don't see the developer um, in the on the ribbon where I can find that. Let's do that today and, and that'll be good for today because now I'll show you how to add developer and then you can kind of explore developer and then we'll talk about macros uh, next week. Let, let me show everybody. Uh, so to enable developer, it's not because you have an older one usually. I think we're all, if you have one in the last 10 years, you should be good. Okay. Um, where you go is you go to file. Okay. So everybody uh, follow along here. So this way you can get a jump start on macros. So you go to file. So let me go again, file. Yes. Under options the last option the last um action down here last button options. go to the options link and then customize ribbon okay. so i think they by default developer is unchecked because yeah maybe microsoft thinks the majority of the people aren't going to use it so it's unchecked probably for that reason but we're going to use it. So we want to go in here and make sure you put a check mark in there. And then once you put a check mark in there, click OK. And now you'll see the developer tab. Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. So that brings us to 1 o'clock. So I, I hope I hope the, the pivot tables will interest you a little bit. Um, I hope this macro is getting you excited a little bit for next week. Um, let me show you one more thing with pivot tables. No, that's not it. Uh, do you have any video or anything with the regards to pivot table? Actually, I do. I do. And, and we can talk a little bit about it next week if there's time. Sure. So it's not one of the items that's required yes. to be covered. But if there's time, we can. You know, if you so I want to try it. myself uh, during yeah. the break. 
Yeah, yeah, do it. So let me go back to the website and see. Where is it? My, my, there it is. Um, is that it? Okay, yes, this is it. Okay. All right, so that link that we used today. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, do I have... I know I have something in Spanish. I, I, I did a class. Um, I volunteered to do a class, I think, two weeks ago. And th that one's in Spanish. So if you know Spanish, um, my, my Spanish is not very good. So the reason I volunteered was to uh, improve my Spanish. And I think we had 4,000 students um, yeah. sign in for that one. It was so cool. And everybody says they learned something. So my Spanish wasn't that bad. Um, OK. So H lookup, uh, this one is nested functions, nested, nested. Okay, unfortunately, it's not there. You only have the Spanish version. The Spanish version is on the home page. Uh, it's not going to help a lot of us. Um, but this is the one I did uh, a few weeks ago, and I think we had 4,000 students tune into wow. that one. Um, I, I'm sorry, but that, that's the only thing I have right now. But once we talk about pivot tables, maybe I'll, I'll post that. You know, that'll be the English version. <laughs> um, yeah, so pivot tables are fantastic. Uh, let's see, what else did I want to show you? All right, so let me, let's just get back on track with, with this. All right, so VLOOKUPs are done. Name ranges, that's going to be a piece of cake. Uh, macros are going to be interesting. I, I hope what I showed you made it interesting. Nested if function, and this is where we'll end. Nested if functions lets you add more complexity to data crunching or data analysis. So what we saw with VLOOKUP, like putting things under yes or no, or under high price, mid price, value price. So that's kind of like a nested if function, but nested if function can give you even more complexity. And nested if function, there is a video for that. The way you can think about that is, and let me get my tablet here. So, and this is what, this is just a thought that I'll leave you with. So you can kind of start thinking, okay, I need to draw. I got it. where's my draw? Ink, there we go, ink. Oh, I hate when it does that. All right. Let me do something else, um, PowerPoint. When that fails, PowerPoint lets me draw. I don't know, Word sometimes lets me draw and sometimes it doesn't. All right, so I just want to show you this insert. Uh, I can use this, but a blank one is better. OK, yeah, there we go. OK, so, so with an if function, you're, you're testing something, right? This some condition. This is going to be some condition. Whether it could be whatever. What, what color is the traffic light? Is, is the house price more than 500? It's going to be some condition, right? And then that, that test can be either true or false. And then based on that, maybe if it's true, maybe you buy you know, whatever the condition is. If it's false, you, you don't buy, right? That, that's a simple if example. Now, in the advanced class, we're going to be able to make it more complex by nesting another if function. So I can do an, I can do an if something else here, and that will lead to um, a true and a false. So what you have here are you have paths. So I have a path that goes this way. I have another path that goes down here, but then turns turns to the right. So so if functions, you can think of them as paths. So here I'm going to have if something else, and that can be true or false. So this is giving more complexity to perhaps a decision-making process. So nothing really new here, except that you're nesting an if function inside of that 
first function. And here you're nesting another if function inside of the original function. And you can continue this to make it as complex as you want to. So this is an interesting thing because now you have the ability to really develop complex models in Excel. You know, it's just what questions are you testing for? Okay, so we're going to look at nested if functions uh, next week along with macros. And Does nested if functions are interesting. I'm sorry. Does the complexity indicate the number of parentheses? So, so the complexity, the way that works, so I can have if, right? The usual function is you have some test. Yeah, let me get rid of these. These get in the way. Okay, so let's say if like the price, whoops, if the, okay, it doesn't like that. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's try it with it. If the price, let's say it's bigger than 450K. I'm just gonna shorthand it for, for this demo. Okay, and then if that's true, we'll say buy, right? Or, or maybe don't buy. You know, it's just figure out what makes sense. So you don't buy. And, but if it's false, meaning that it's less, then maybe, maybe you buy. Okay. So in a nested if function, I'll take one of these out. And I'll say, if that's false, the next thing I want to check for is this is where I would put another if function. If maybe bathrooms have to be bigger than one. Bathrooms, the number of bathrooms, right? The number of bathrooms is bigger than or equal to two. Then it'll be a buy. If it's false, it'll be a don't buy. So yes. So this is going to add more parentheses, Michael. Um, but it's going to do that because you're nesting another if function inside. This, this if function will, will actually go. Well, that if function will actually go in here. It'll replace what was there before. So that's how we're going to nest. And of course, you only need one equal sign. So the equal sign would go there. You don't need another equal sign there. But that we'll talk about that next week. All right, so I hope this was interesting and that you walked away with um, the ability to kind of connect the idea of a VLOOKUP function with things that you can do for your own needs and that you know pivot tables, macros, and nested if functions, maybe that you'll be able to connect with your own work. All right. How did you change the background of your spreadsheet to go black? Let's see. Uh, good question. Uh, let's see. So for that, I did, I went to file and I did it with office. Was it account? Account. And here we go. Office theme. I went office theme. Uh, the normal one I think is colorful, right? That's, that's the one everybody has. And then, you know, sometimes I'm working at night and that's a little too bright for me. So I went to file, I went to account, and I went to um, black. This way, it's just, I, I find it that it's not as rough on the eyes. Right? I see. Yeah, the white is just too bright and then it wakes you up at night and that's not good. All right. So, all right. So I'll see everybody next week. Same link. Okay. Same time and same website. Can I ask you a quick question with the nested if? Sure. Um, because I, I use that a lot. Uh, are mm -hmm. you limited as to how many calculations you can do? No, you can go as big as 60. I, I think at one point it was 64. But, but now I think it's limited to the hardware, which I think goes well beyond 64 nested ifs. So the, okay. yeah, it's it's essentially unlimited. I I never had to go more than maybe maybe four or five nested ifs. Okay, because I was doing one and then it, it just got 
complex, so I stopped. Um, I, I can show you what it is next time. Okay. Because I, I need help as to how to expand it. Okay. Um, and the second thing is with the nested if, uh, usually I use it to, to do something, but can you use the nested if to perform a function like highlight a result mm. or, or um, insert yep. a picture or something? There, if, is, there is a conditional formatting to highlight. So if you want to highlight um, values that meet a certain condition, you can do that with that's under file or no, 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 not file, home conditional formatting. This will let you uh, conditionally format something or highlight something that'll let okay. you do that. And then as far as inserting an image, mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never tried that. I've never tried that to insert an image with an if function. Okay. That would be interesting. Uh, that it. would be, oh, uh, maybe, I don't know. And I, I never come across that one. I would have to say maybe if something is true, you show the link to the image. That's probably doable. But to show the image itself, I don't know. But maybe show the link to the image. That seems pretty easy, right? Instead of buy, don't buy, it would just be the link to the image. Or you save the image onto your desktop and say, insert this or, or this. Yeah. I don't know about Excel's ability to, to insert images inside of a cell. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's All right. <laughs> do you have handouts? Uh, I have the recording. So I'm going oh. to do the process the recording and put it on the site. Okay. Okay. So just give me a little bit of time for that. Um, maybe tomorrow, by tomorrow night. All right. Um, thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you same time next week. Thank, thank you. Very much. Bye, sir. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody. And bring your questions, all right? Okie dokie. Okay. Have a, enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye, bye Michael. Bye, Rosita. Bye. -bye. bye. All right, I'm going to count down. Three, two, one, five.